Hello guys, I'm Sean the Bro. We're back again for another episode of Game Maker Tutorial. So this one's a good one. This one's a more intense one, but it's not more difficult. It's just something you would use more often, more frequently, and also um it's something that you would need to know how to do because you couldn't just skip it, if that makes sense. It's not something that you can go through a fighting game, a shooting game, anything like that without really missing. So this does not have to be a Smash Bros. tutorial. This is for anything, although Smash Bros. definitely can be a game that you use this for, and it would be a major player in the games that you use it for. So anyway, here I started a little template and this will give us everything we need to have. So I have Sprite Character 1. So that is just a stick figure with a white head and two legs. He has no arms. Well, they, he does, but they're at his side or whatever. And then this is just a small animation of him starting to take his hand out, his full arm extended, punching, and then putting it back in to complete the animation. Then we have Character 2, which is basically the same character. His legs are a little different, and he's red. And this guy's flinching, so I drew this up. This has got two X's over his eyes, and uh, it's not a grin. <laughs> the opposite of a grin, a frown. And what we're doing today is making enemies flinch, or making enemies react to damage, or making players react to damage. Either way, making two objects react with each other. So you have to excuse me if you hear a lot of background noise uh, <laughs> it's a little hard for me to talk I'm a little congested and everything and not that you care but my point is if you hear all that moving around and stuff that's me trying to get comfortable so I can talk successfully for you and <coughs> excuse me see like that and sound good anyway besides these four sprites uh, you can do it in two sprites. Two sprites. You can do it in two sprites. You could have one character and one enemy. Or if they could both... Whatever you want. They could be two enemies, however you want them to react. But you could only have two and still have this. However, that requires sub-images, which is a little bit more difficult. It's a lot more convenient because then you can put them all together into one. And you don't have to be changing objects. But it's a little bit more difficult so for a beginner tutorial I'm gonna show you the drag and drop options of how to make characters or enemies whatever you want react to damage or uh, conflict so we have that then we have the objects for each of them so let's go to object character one character one is going to be our player so if we have object character one and its sprite is character one we're gonna want now this stuff's a little bit of a bonus I have no key in here is gonna make him stop moving that's basic and then left is gonna make him move left at three speed of three and right is gonna make him move right at the speed of three now here's where here's where I'm going to do my attack where player the player is gonna do his attack so I have it so you can they can go through each other but if you punch the enemy player, then he flinches. So this would be useful for, of course, Super Smash Bros. games, like I said. Shooting games, even if it's death animations. This can be used with death animations, too. It's not just flinching. It's flinching, death animation. <coughs> Excuse me. Animations, any type of reactions like that. So if you want to do the question mark block from Mario you could do it like this too you would just say you would do well you would do the same method you'll see but all that can be involved here so for example this is let's just say a small boxing match it's two stick figures boxing we have our character now when you press space I don't have sp I have press space not just keyboard space because keyboard space means you can hold it I want it to complete the animation and then have to press it again to activate it so when you press space, I change my object into the attacking character. 
So if you're doing a Super Smash Brothers game, and let's say you have Mario, and A is the punch, A on the keyboard is the punch. Then when you press press A, you're gonna change your object into Mario punching. Or if you're doing the sub images in the sprites, you're just gonna change the sprite to that sub image. Next, you go to that character's object and or you go to that sprite I should say you stay in that sprite but in the sub image you do this if <coughs> that sub image <coughs> oh, excuse me that sub image and or object like this like we have comes in contact with object character 2 object character 2 is the enemy so this could be whoever you want it to be if you want this to be Ganondorf it's Ganondorf if you want it to be Bowser it's Bowser whatever you could even do reverse and put this as the player if you wanted to Whoever you want the enemy to be, whoever you want to be taking the hits. If the punch collides with the enemy, then you change the enemy into the flinching enemy. Character 2, flinch. And once, I just have, once the punch ends, change the object back into character 1. So he doesn't stay with his fist out. And then in character 2, I don't have anything actually because we're not gonna have him moving. He could move freely. Do you want him to move freely? We can uh, we can do that. But I'll I'll show you first what it's like. Now in the flinching, in the character being hurt, if you don't want them to die, say for example, punch out. When you punch an enemy and they get stunned for that second, like bald bull, when you punch him in the stomach when he charges you. He doesn't die. He doesn't get down automatic. Well, okay, that's a bad example because <laughs> he does. But when you punch someone and they get stunned and you, it makes them vulnerable to attack and they don't die, then you can do this to set them back to their enemy way, their previous way. You can just change it back, and if it's sub-images, you can just change the sub-image. But if you're doing objects, you can, when it's created, set an alarm to however long you want it to be. And then in the alarm, change the object back to character 2. You don't want to just have it when it's created, change it back, or else you won't see it for very long. Then in this room, it's demo for demonstration. I just have character 1 and character 2 right here. Now, so I have the ability to move left and right and the ability to punch. That's his animation. And then it goes back in, and you can only. I did it that fast. Now, if you punch the enemy, he gets stunned and he goes back. Now, this is a very basic example, true. However, this could be. <coughs> Excuse me again. This could be used in so much of a higher, more difficult way. Pretend this was Mario and the red guy was Link. If Mario uses a basic punch, that animation where you see the X's over the eyes and the frown could actually be him stumbling back. It's the same procedure if you do it with objects. If you do it with sub-images, then you would just have to set the range of sub-images, which I can easily tell you how to do without showing you in the video, but I can show you in the video as well, and I will. Anyway, if you do it with objects, you can just have the object go through the entire animation. So if you have a sprite map and you have one of Link getting hurt, then you punch Link and you play that animation, and then when animation ends, you put him back in Link form. And, <coughs> excuse me again. And with the Sprites, as I said, it's as simple as this. There's no difference. Chain sprite sub images right here. You can change yourself into the same character, but change your sub image. And then you can just make it go, you can make it start that and go through. And then once it reaches a certain sub image, that's when you break out of it. And then you can change the sub image back to zero or whatever sub image you had that you want it to return to. So it's not much harder that way. And that should be really everything you need to know for that, and that can go a long way, but that's pretty basic. 
So thank you guys for watching. If you enjoyed, please rate, comment, subscribe, and go make some things collide. Good. Hi. Hello. Hey, what's up? Uh, Hi, Gray, Michael, Lindsay, Hi. some kind of order. Uh, you're watching Sean the Bro. You know, you know it's legit because he has a shirt and he has a phone case. You can't show yeah. the phone case because he's recording with me. I don't it. have a phone case. He's no. showing them. Case. In fact, Sean is my bro. It doesn't say Sean will. the Bro, though. It's just no, black. It Loser. Check out Sean the Hi. Bro. Yeah. Or you're a bitch. <laughs> All right. Yeah, you're a bitch. Thank you, guys. So much.